Are you a dummy? Good, because you clicked on the right video. Today we're going to teach you about pharmacokinetics. Pharmacology is a broad field concerned with the study of drugs of all types and their effects. Pharmacokinetics is a subdiscipline of pharmacology focused on how drugs move within the body. Pharmacokinetics focuses on how drugs reach their targets and exert their effects. This process can be broken down into four steps of absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. A synapse, also known as a neuronal junction, is a space between two neurons that allow an electrical or chemical signal, such as a neurotransmitter, to pass from one neuron to the next. A neurotransmitter is a chemical messenger which is used to transmit messages between neurons. They are released when an electrical signal reaches the end of one neuron, where it then converts to a chemical signal by releasing neurotransmitters into the synapse, which will then bind to the receptors on the next neuron to pass on the message. One of the major classifications of drugs in pharmacology are agonists. What is an agonist, you may ask? An agonist is a drug which binds to the synaptic receptor and increases postsynaptic responses. An agonist mimics or impersonates naturally occurring neurotransmitters. An agonist acts like keys that are able to unlock a cell to produce an effect. Nicotine is a real-world example of an agonist. It binds to the acetylcholine receptors, which triggers the release of more acetylcholine neurotransmitters, which is why it is considered an agonist. The reason why nicotine addiction is so common is because it stimulates the release of dopamine and endorphins, which activates the reward pathway. Here we see nicotinic acetylcholine receptors receiving the neurotransmitter acetylcholine as it travels through the synapse through the previous neuron. Acetylcholine binds to the nicotinic receptors to produce dopamine. Once nicotine is introduced, it binds with these same nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. The drug works to excite the release of dopamine in the brain. This dopamine release decreases rapidly once nicotine exits the brain, thus creating its addicting effect. Antagonists work in the opposite way of agonists in that they block the effects and response of a receptor instead of activating it. They basically act like glue jammed into the keyhole of a lock so it cannot be opened. An example of an antagonist is atropine. Atropine is an example of a direct antagonist. It's commonly used by eye doctors to dilate the pupils during an eye exam. In order for the drug to exert its effect, atropine acts as an antagonist by binding to the acetylcholine receptors on the postsynaptic or target cell. Binding of atropine prevents the neurotransmitter acetylcholine from binding. These are acetylcholine receptors being released into the synapse and binding to the receptors on the next neuron. Besides producing dopamine, acetylcholine plays a factor in the neuromuscular junction in order to cause a muscle, muscle contraction. Atropine binds to the acetylcholine receptor, which in turn prevents acetylcholine from binding. To conclude, drugs can behave as agonists or antagonists, depending on whether the neurotransmitter can exhibit its intended effect. This effect depends on the synthesis, release, and binding of the neurotransmitter to its receptor for the effect in the target cell to be exerted. If the neurotransmitter is not able to bind to its receptor, whether it be through a prevention in its creation or release, the drug is classified as an antagonist. If the neurotransmitter is able to bind to its receptor, whether it be it through a stimulation of its release or prevention of reuptake, the drug is classified as an agonist. Thank you for watching. Now you're not a dummy.